Hello and welcome to another replay cast. Today we are playing that one, the only, the everyone's favorite, Comet. But instead of using the 77mm that's only good for one thing, which is shooting gold ammo from it, we are going to use the 3.7 inch tier 5 howitzer, which uh, leaves an impression that you're throwing rocks at the enemies. Let me be real here for a second. If the Comet didn't get this gun, uh, I would never, ever, 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 ever play this absolute piece of shit of a tank that the Comet is. But this gun makes it fucking hilarious. And now what you're thinking, But first, this other YouTuber said that the Comet is the best tier 7 mini- Shh, shut the fuck up. Now that we have that out of the way, Let's get into the game. So here we are playing Fjord, speaking middle, and look at that. Oh, baby, a little light tank. Well played, buddy, well played. Not done yet. We're kind of on a timer because I'm being shot and ass by the Cromwell, but hey, we gotta go for that one. And yeah, let's go. 750, 1500 combined damage in the opening engagement of a fight. That is um, almost enough for... Uh, breaching the Comet standards for three marking it, uh, which surprisingly aren't very high. But now we transition to the second stage of the game where we don't have the surprise effect on uh, the enemies anymore. We can still third person this Cromwell, but we have to be very lucky. He's actually using that cover pretty well. And while I do have some shots on him, they're pretty bad and unlikely to hit. And if he knows what I am and what I'm doing, he probably is going to be able to dodge those reasonably effectively. I was told once that uh, if you have uh, nothing nice to say about things, then you shouldn't say anything. I'm gonna use that in this case only. So uh, let's talk about the map. All right, um, let's move on. We have a suicide light tank squad here. I do have a reasonable chance to pan it, but if I hit it badly, I will not pan. A pretty bizarre play there by that little buddy. And of course, shooting on the move with this derp gun is as effective as you would imagine. So the enemy team has kind of doomed itself by all going north. Uh, north is okay for two or three tanks, but the middle is where it's all at. You gotta drop into that ditch, and then the crossfire between the north and the middle is gonna be very hard to stop, very hard to beat. But since they have nobody in the middle, we can uh, we can just kind of uh, use these bushes, use the double bush as much as we can. And as you can see, it's rather effective here. The Cromwell did not spot us, and we're comfortably sitting here and spotting whoever decides to peek and play against us here and here's the next volunteer and this is a big boy we ain't panning this one uh, with this he with heat maybe probably not though i don't know if it's like 100 pen on heat it would be a, a tough shot wouldn't want to really go for that um he does have some tree cover there and the funny thing with this gun, you could actually try to shoot down the trees in front of him, but uh, with me being likely to get spotted as well for doing dumb shit like that, uh, it's probably not worth it, and we're just gonna wait and see what he wants to do. Another close game by 2020 standards here, 7-2 the scoreline, and uh, we kind of know where all the enemies are, we're just kind of waiting till they make their final desperate move, and here comes the T-34-100, and, you know, he definitely will turn this battle around with a play like that. I don't really think they really had any chance to turn this around at this point anymore, but uh, it's not really the best play you could have made out of there, but hey, I don't think he cares about that too much anymore. And it's 9-3, it's enough camping, let's put the Comet's armor to the test. I think we failed. Uh, yeah, the turret, the turret, the famous Comet turret. I don't know about you, but for me, this bounces the grand total of fucking jack shit. On average, I'm going for some cheeky third person shots. Not super effective as you can see against that Cromwell, but um, but sometimes they work at longer ranges, they get a bit better as you have that shell arc helping you out a bit. Uh, and now the Hellcat trying to finish that guy as well, just not really sure where the Cromwell is. Uh, and uh, in an open DPM fight, he probably eats me alive, but I have enough support to not really have to worry about that. Another non panning shot, unfortunately, on the Super Alcat. And now uh, there's no way that I will ever make uh, to shoot the Cromwell. And even if I do uh, make it to shoot at him, the 1357 drives faster than my shell. So it's very unlikely that we'll actually be able to do any damage. And that is the game. 
All right, let's wrap this up by looking at the end plates. Obviously, the ace tanker. Uh, get our third mark of excellence in the comet as well. Ended up doing 2,135 damage, 1,736 assisted. Picked up two kills. And this is a public service announcement. If you have the comet, if you're bored to death of how boring and monotone and shitty the small gun is, try this one out. It might not be as consistent, especially if you're one of those, you know, pro comet players with, uh, you know, 80% premium ammo. But. It's a hell of a lot more fun. Uh, this derp gun is hilarious. Uh, it's obviously completely out of its tier, but there's a lot of shit driving around that you can still pen. And when you do, it's fucking funny. Also, uh, not really sure what Wargaming is planning to do with the HE. Apparently the changes that they were proposing aren't coming through. So who the fuck knows what's going to happen with HE. So maybe you should take your chance and uh, try this out while you can. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.